Okay, so here we are. We need some uh, pH water for the next step that I'm going to be doing with um, soaking some rock wool cubes for transplanting seedlings into them. Um, but first, we need pH balanced water. Now, this is not distilled water, even though it says distilled water. It's been used. This is an empty bottle. I filled it up with regular tap water. For my tap water, um, it's coming out of a 250 foot well. Um, most of you guys will probably have, uh, you know, city water, um, some sort of tap or, you know, street line that comes into your house. So you'll always want to check and get a baseline of your pH of your water. And you'll also want to check the baseline of any kind of mineral deposits with your uh, TDS meters. Um, I know what my TDS is. It ranges um, anywhere between, I'd say probably 90 to like 105. So I kind of know where my range is. My pH um, obviously can fluctuate depending on uh, a variety of things. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do um, to get my water uh, for soaking the rock wool pH balanced. And I mean, it, it, it'll cross over into other things as well, but just so you have a general understanding. Now this is a one gallon container. I like to do this in one gallon containers uh, simply because it's easier. Now, I will take my TDS pin, I mean, I'm sorry, my pH pin, it's an Apera Instruments, okay? I'm gonna turn it on, press and hold the power button. All right, and here's how simple this pin is. I just drop it in, okay? And it's gonna give me a smiley face in just a second here. I'll show you what it does. And it says I'm right about 8.0. I'm going to check that again. This time I'll do it so that you can see the, the readings. All right, let's see if that works for you. If it's not going to work, nope. You zoom out a little bit, sorry. You probably can't read that now. So dropping it in 8.2. It's, it's holding between 8. And 8.2. So let's call it 8.1. Oh, let's call it 8.1. Now, this is what I use. I use pH down by General Hydroponics. There's plenty of other things you, out there you could use to uh, drop your pH. This is what I use because it's already bottled up for me and I don't have to worry about trying to source things down. I can just order online. And you know, this thing will come with a little little squeeze droppers, little eyedropper thing. Um, I use a syringe with a blunt tip, okay? The reason I do this is because it's got the milliliters, I don't know if you can see that, milliliters from two to 10. So I think it's like two to five drops per um, gallon of water. But because I'm so high at eight, I'm probably gonna put in two milliliters and go from there. Let's see what happens. All right, so I got my two millies and I just drop it in there, suck some up, drop. All righty. Put the cap on, kind of shake it up. And my target is about 5.8. 5.7 or 5.9, anywhere between 5.7 and 5.9. Ideally 5.8. Okay. Now I'm going to drop my meter back in. All right, so we're at 7.1 right now. So it's dropped from 8.1 to 7.1. So I know I need probably a little bit more than two more. So I'll go three milliliters, which makes it a total of five in this gallon of water. Now I will tell you on a well, 
Um, my pH, like I said, varies. Um, I think last summer I was running about seven to seven and a half pH. We're a little up in the winter time for some reason. All right, let's see where that gets us. Drop that in. Look at that, 5.6, 5.5, 4, 3, 4. So I went a little far, but I'm gonna double check that. <clears throat> Dry the probe off, and we'll go up again. 5, 4, 5, 3. It wants to fluctuate, so that's why I'm a little... So 5.2, that's a little low. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some pH up. And typically, I don't have this problem, but I'm starting from a higher pH point. So bear with me, and I'll show you how to make your little corrections. Okay, so here we are. Now we use pH up. Because I went over on my pH down, I've got to raise it back up. And maybe I did that on purpose, just to show you this product. So, again, I'm just gonna put a couple of drops in. Whoop, that may be too much. Bear with me. We will put the cap on. Give it a shake. Get our pH probe or pen. Drop it right in. Still saying 5.3. So a couple drops wasn't enough. And typically what I find too is with well water, it's got a lot of variations in it. And, the, and I find it's harder to get it back up than it is to get it down for some reason. And it could also be my stirring. Um, I don't have anything to get in there and stir it. I'm using just a little space of air that's in here to shake it up, which is not ideal. So we'll go ahead and put our probe back in. We're at 5.7, which is perfect. All right, so just remember, it's easier to get it down than it is to get it up. So, yes, I did take it too far, and I did that on purpose just to show you how to correct it. And a lot of people don't want to waste their time, but, you know, when you're using homemade remedies and stuff to make your own pH balanced water, it is a little bit more difficult because you'll have to find, you know, an acid and a base, whereas you can just go out and buy you know, something that's pre-made by whatever brand or company you choose to use. Um, I just happen to use the GH products because it was easier for me to find locally. All right. So I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you learned a little something about pH water. Uh, if you go to the blog site, I'll try and put some links and some valid um, information about pH testing and why you want certain levels. Um, for cannabis, 5.8 seems to be my magic number, um, just because that has the range of allowing the most nutrients to be absorbed by the plant. And again, you can research that, and I'll have videos on that in the future as well. Okay? All right. I hope you enjoyed it.